feel free to let yourself known. We're, we're actually about to move into Cerberus and take a look at it. I just had to battery save because damn load times. Right, so audio and period. So we can probably skip over to, oh, no, that one. There we go. Cerberus, here we go. Let's try loose. See, see how much quicker that loaded? I mean, it's not loaded in yet because I got beach ball, but you saw it. There we go. That, I'm just going to say, being as though Audio Imperial is here, I'm just going to say, this UI is delicious. Although, I noticed something about it. Like, <laughs> it, I, it's so beautiful, but you, like in this day and age, it's a risk to make the small UI, you see, because now you're, you're in that kind of like saga with its soldier is like, fuck you. Like that's, that's why pretty much every library from now on, I think I'm going to make is going to have that big one. There's just this weird perception of size, you know, I'm, <laughs> that kind of applies to more than drum library or library UI size, you know? All right. So let's find where our keys are. Where am I playing here? Yep, should be playing back. Where, um, okay, my keyboard isn't working now for some reason. Let's try this again. Oh, it's because I put it down here, because I'm an idiot. Let's do that again. Yeah, I, I like, you call it space wasting. Yeah, Like, yes, the Saga UI could have been much smaller. I definitely agree. There are some UIs like, um, What's it called? Dominus. Is Dominus a side one? No, it's not, is it? Right, let me do. Yeah. So like Dominus Choir has the big one, but it's um, you know, they use all of the all of the things. Right, let me just make sure. Are they the same size? So Saga's even bigger than that. Wait. <laughs> it's gonna get crazy. They need to add something in. Wait, right, hang on. And then Audio Imperia. Let's look at Cerberus. Let's just bring that in. Poor Cerberus. I mean, it's not the size that counts, guys. It's how you use it. But so we have like three different sizes of library now. You know what I mean? Like it's getting a little bit chaotic. <laughs> it's getting a little bit crazy, native instruments. But I'd, I'd appreciate if you calmed your tits on the sizes. You know what I mean? Like it's it's interesting. Unless, of course, this one is just smaller than usual. I don't know. But we'll uh, we'll we'll dive in. Right, let's just get rid of that, rid of that, and let's put this back on track one. Let's make it the daddy. There we go. So I can see already. So which ones are we on? So we got... We have so we do. Okay, so what I'll do first is I'll just play, I'll just play through some of the sounds so we get a listen so that's a roll ah and this one does so Cerberus is uh you know is, is Audio Imperial's new library and like I said it feels like they're moving more towards the orchestral now which is kind of cool for me as a hybrid developer <laughs> but no they sound really cool so let's move okay so the kicks are here so these are all Grand Casa and as you can see uh, the articulations of what I'm pushing are here so C1 D1 you can see it lights up to let me know that I hit it. And they have the roll so I can go. Although the only problem I can foresee at the minute is the, the top of that roll sounds quieter than the main hit. So this is the loose one, by the way. That's why the drums are a bit looser. Okay, let's let's try putting something in. Just just for my own sake, I'm going to put in a little a little bass line or something that's just kind of holding down a sixteenth, so that I can you know get a feel for it. Diva. I'm going to put in my cheesy my cheesy like. Um, I made it basically, it's like hi-hats. <laughs> so I can do. So we're just gonna put one of those in so we can program over it. Fuck it, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll put it, we'll 
going G. There we go. Move you out the way. And we'll just add like a little. And then we'll, no, not pull. There we go. So I'm just going to program a pattern with this. But one thing worth mentioning is this isn't as big as it goes. They have a type version. They have a process version. They have stacked versions. And the stacked version is actually my favorite. In fact, I'm going to start with the stacked because it sounds more impressive. <laughs> so, you know, we'll work up a rhythm with the, with the stacked version. As you hear, the, uh, the stacked version is way bigger. All right, let's turn. I'm just going to turn on all these mic positions. So what I would probably do with these is pull, just pull these back a bit. Cause I noticed when I was using these yesterday is that the close mics have a lot of kind of, a lot of high transient energy. In them. Not as much as I remember. Okay. So I'm just gonna back this off a little bit. I'm actually going to just get like a little 16th thing to layer up with the... Let's get that guy. Dun, 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 bram, bam, bam. So these are kicks. I'm good. I wonder what happens if we just put a four to the floor kick in. So toms we're gonna do. One, two, three, one, two. This one's going to be dun 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 dun. Okay. Actually, no, it doesn't work. Da 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 da. And then we'll actually do that. We'll get rid of that last beat there so that it picks up again. We've got the high tom up here. Dun. Uh, how, what should we do here? Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Just like a nice. We got a cool kind of vibe going there. We got clicks, we got a bit of everything. All right, where's that snare? I mean, like if we wanted to do like a like a groove. Oh, wait, wrong one. Two and four. You know, if you wanted to kind of groove along. Of course, we've got kicks here, so we give that boom. Okay. So 
we have like a stacked version now. Uh, we got, so now I'm going to actually bring in like the processed version and play it over the same thing. <clears throat> Wait for it to load before you push play. Otherwise you, um, you basically get the musical equivalent of a Pollock, like a Jason Pollock painting. <laughs> That's essentially what happens if you try and play percussion before it's loaded in. Now, I don't think I have to um, point out how much bigger the processed version is. <laughs> um, and as you can see, this has become one of my go-tos for um, this kind of big, over-the-top sound now. Like I was mentioning, with Saga, it's natural. And with this, like, the natural sound of it, like, um, compared to the Saga, like, the room mics didn't sound quite as wide as I'd have liked. However... When it comes to process percussion. It, um, it takes it to another level. So what we'll do is we'll... I know, Diva's putting in a lot of work right now. Right, so that's like doing a, a big, you know, a big kind of rhythm, but we'll delete that for now. So we're going to be like a doom, doom, doom. Let's try a, come like a different kind of thing, different vibe. You know, like we, we could do some accents. Is that Grand Casa gone? Where are you at? C1. You're down there. Right, so for this to kind of work, we need accents. This is one thing about percussion programming that a lot of people forget is if you let everything be the same you know, kind of be the same uh, level. That's where the, uh, you know, I know right now it sounds very mechanical. But we can rebuild. And of course, like you can just do big old drum with them, drum rhythms, drum rhythms. You know, like this is just like. And that's just like a basic rhythm like that. But like if we were, um, you know, we've got like kicks and snare. Why is my kicks gone? Get like a legit. You know, even just as drums, it sounds great. Wait, what was that? There was like a, a rhythm I heard the other day. I think it's like, it's one of those like weird offbeat kind of ones where it's like, boom. Okay. Nah, whatever it is. Right, so that was the... Um, in fact, let's bring one of our old rhythms back just for now. Not this one, because this one was kind of shocking. Goodbye. Let's just bring this one back for now. And let's try, let's try the, uh, let's just try the tight hits. So they're not stacked anymore, so it'll be a lot smaller sounding. But I just wanted to show you guys the stacks. Right, 
and let's try the uh, processed tight. I'm going to put it on the second one so we can hear the difference. So this is the first one. And then, should have just let that play out. <clears throat> let it load first. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> it's funny because I actually kind of like that. That was almost like a glitch. That was almost like some... Uh, oh, what's, what's the word? Like a... Is it John Hopkins? Is that his name? Like a John Hopkins kind of glitch thing. Anyway. Aphex James. <laughs> nice. So this is just the... One thing to mention, by the way, they're, they're quite heavy on the CPU. So you watch, like, I'm playing a lot of things here, but a lot of voices end up playing back. So you can probably tell the difference between the two. We'll put it in with the synth. And so what you probably saw me do there was turn up the big knob. This is kind of a staple in the... Um, in the uh, Audio Imperia libraries. So first off, if we look at effects, you can see that we have like red, 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 orange, 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 yellow, and green. If we come up to the, is it the top that they normally have these? They normally have the effects put somewhere. Is it down at the bottom? So you see that corresponds to this, right? You see I'm lighting up the, so if I play this uh, back, we're just gonna put everything on here for now. Sorry, Diva. I have to hold it down with the actual keyboard. Jesus, it's all the way down there. Okay. Okay, for some reason, oh wait, I know why. Because <laughs> I'm over there. For some reason, that's not that's not staying. So I'm going to try turn off retrigger. Interesting. Well, I can turn them off, but for some reason it keeps turning itself off. You see, it's on, but when I, as soon as I play the sequence, it's turning off. So I'm not sure if that's a bug. I know Audio Imperia is in the chat room if you want to let me know what's happening there. So I'm pushing the key, and as you can see, that's what it's supposed to do. When I hold down the key, it triggers the uh, corresponding, you know, C2 doesn't actually seem to do it. But... You see? And then all these kinds of... Like, I'm lighting up the effects. So this will basically do the pan left and right. Which is a cool way to add effects, but for some reason it's not quite working for me at the minute. So I'm going to... I'm going to um, send a message to Audio Imperia, see if they can help me with that. So this is the inserts and sends. So you guys have seen, I'm doing this on the uh, processed one, so it's kind of diminishing returns here. But uh, So this is, looks like the compressor. So. And again, not staying on. Do I have like an off trigger or something? Stop. Maybe if I pull this in. Right, let's try this. Because normally you would turn these on with the little lamps, if I remember correctly. But for some reason, it's turned itself off. Um, I don't think that's supposed to happen. But, you know, you have all your effects in there. And then on the main knob here, you can actually come into this little uh, big knob, uh, you know, wheel down here. And this allows you to add effects to the uh, the, the effects. <laughs> add effects to the effects. I know that makes sense, right? So as you can see, the sample rate here is turned on. 
uh, with the noise and whatnot. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to try bringing the compressor on as well. So does that, yeah. So now I can control what it actually does. So we want to, I don't want it to change the attack actually. How would we do this? So probably let's do it. Let's do it with the ratio so that it does like a bigger amount as we turn up and bring the threshold down quite a lot. And it's funny because that's now on all the time. Is that not what I'm supposed to do? So let's turn off the other one. Right, so yeah, we've turned off that, but let's turn on distortion because that's easy to manage. So that's just on all the time. But I think if we put this on, now it's it's... Obviously, you want to be <laughs> you want to be kind of careful, um, but let's bring this down to like I don't know twenty nine so that it doesn't go all the way. Um, yeah, maybe not all the way up there. So I'm actually going to keep that quite low. Let's try like a subtle distortion, and it brings in a rotator up to 100%. That could be cool. I don't know what it's going to sound like. Okay, what am I changing? No, I want to turn the mix, the amount. That's what we want, not the speed. Turn that off. So now we have the amount is what's being controlled by the big knob. So... So uh, someone someone asks if they're buffering audio. If that's happening to everybody, um, I can only assume it's something to do with the CPU and streaming. I'm not experiencing any cutouts or anything like that here. Um, I actually kind of want to do like a... I want to try a three, a 3 plus 3 plus 2 rhythm. I just like them. I like the way they feel. So like... You know, like something like this, and then. Let's actually have some dynamics though. So we'll turn. You, sir, are becoming a 37. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Sounds cool. But now what we'll do is we'll, with our kick drum, just kind of hit those, um, hit those accents. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, and this is just like a little, you know, percussion writing tip is if you accent the accents with something deeper, if these actually poke through a little bit. Really don't like that anymore. And you can actually do you can actually do the same with high instruments as well. You know, we could probably Probably put this on a lower instrument, sorry, a higher instrument, and then just keep the accents exclusively for the low. Or, you know, you can do the whole thing with clicks as well. So 
So what am I hearing now? I'm hearing like... So we can actually kind of use this to create like a cool flange effect and then the amount comes in, but I'm, I'm just going to turn off the, uh, the rotator. Right, so we need to get that amount for some reason, the amount, oh, flange. Okay. So we want the amount as zero. So what did I do wrong there? Why are we still hearing it? Maybe if I pull that down to zero, will that work? Because I had depth, not amount. There we go. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it. I saw it, Audio Imperia. Don't you give me shit. <laughs> no, I know. I missed it. I was on the wrong one. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll bring that and maybe actually I, I, I do like a little bit of the low, the low five. We're going to bring in like just 10% on that. And then mm, I don't want to do the bits that gets a bit crazy. Let's bring in some noise. Let's see what happens if we bring noise in. Oh, it's literally just literally just noise. So kind of useless. <laughs> we don't want the noise. Get rid of the noise. Uh, the lo-fi bit was good though, so we'll keep that. And then maybe, I don't know, let's flanger and phaser together sounds like a recipe for disaster, but let's give it a go. And we're, we'll, we'll just bring it in softly. There we go. You can get a little bit chaotic, but what I would use it for, and I assume the way it's supposed to be used, um, yeah. Uh, well, being as though Audio Imperia is there, can you explain to me quickly what I'm doing wrong with the um, effects things? Because, like, I'm trying to play. And a second ago, it's not doing it now, just because you're here. It keeps turning itself off, and I've got, like, even when I. Uh, it keeps turning itself off, so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, if that's a bug or if it's, you know, the re-trigger, maybe. Yeah, for some reason I can't get that to stay hooked in, so I think I'm doing something wrong there, for which I apologize to the chat. I know you guys hate it when I fuck up, but <laughs> but it's one of those things. So what, I, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to... Um... That is, a, that is a horrible sound that I've created there. So I'm going to turn off this phaser, leave the flanger on. And I'm actually going to put this rotator back on because I like that. Uh, oh, okay. It might be a bug. Okay. If that's the case, then I'll, I'll stop trying to do it. <laughs> um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to see if we can uh, work in a... Um, so if I right enable this and then... I'm wondering if that right information is... So that's not captured in multi-timbral. Would it be captured if I did it on the instrument track? Let's try. So no. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this automation thing onto there because it doesn't look like I can automate that with my system for some reason. Uh, so now we have zero, zero, zero. That is automated. I think now... So now, yeah, you can see that it worked as a right enable on the instrument track. So let me just delete that and see if we can do that on the actual MIDI thing. We can, we can, but it's not recording it. So you can see that this information, oh, I'm pointing at it, but um, the information is actually moving this. You see that's actually having an effect, 
and I can right enable it here, but it, it won't record it unless I right enable the track, which means I, I, I don't really need to, uh, I don't really need to right enable the MIDI track that it's on. I just need to make sure that I have it here and a custom assignment I've done uh, in the automation. For those of you who don't know how that works, um, up here on the top panel in, in contact, you have automation and you see that this knob I can control, which means that it is controllable. So you just drag a number. So let's say we wanted to uh, turn the close mics down. You see, now we have the close mics on there. So what I can actually do is come into my, uh, what do you call it? The automation panel, come down here and then I have to find it somehow. Right, so it would be in one of these. Normally I, I do it the other way around. So percussion instrument and then zero, zero, one. You see that? So that's now gonna hopefully change the close mic. We'll see, we'll see what happens. It's very possible that it won't. We're gonna turn this one all the way down, Jesus. Which is really handy, like if you're doing, let's say for example, I'm doing like a thing where um, I want this first bit to be like kind of organic or room sounding, like particularly on these stacks, right? But then I want the full balls to come in on another section. I don't need to load two patches. I can just set the automation on the close mic and... And, you know, we can also like, you know, uh, yeah, bring in like some random... Some Wait, why have I done it like that? I'm not a masochist. And then like we can do this and then bring in that effect right at the end with like a sweep. Really useful tip. Not a lot of people do that. Um, sometimes they're automatable and the way that you do it, like uh, it's the way that it works with Thrill as well. That's why I always put Thrill on its own instrument rather than load it into something here because um, the automation's already assigned, but it looks like in Cerberus, they're not already assigned and Audio Imperia is in the chat room and can correct me um, if I'm wrong on that, but it's not pre-assigned. So all you have to do is go to the automation, grab the number that you uh, want to, you can see that I have uh, 511 that I can do. And I vaguely remember back in the day, I don't know if you guys remember, I think it, I was doing something with Heaviosity and they had pre-assigned the automation panels, but something was happening with contact. Whereas if you loaded multiple things, uh, multiple libraries in, and it was all pre-assigned and you went over that 511 limit, what it would do is anything after 511, it would put on the same automation channel. So if you turned up 512, you'd turn up like every single dial on, <laughs> on the front panel. And we got those huge, um, those huge, feedback loops because we turned every effect and volume up to 100%, which we do not want. So I don't mind it when they don't assign it because, um, you know, it doesn't really matter because I'm not doing, I'm not touching most of these controls all the time. But if I wanted to do something like this where I can control the mics, you know, and even, you know, we can, we can multi-assign that to, I, I can reassign that, sorry, to the far mic. Oh wait, so it's and I thought I could do it, but anyway, uh, Wait, how do I delete that one? Oh God, I'm useless. Remove, there we go. Because it's down here. So number one now is that, but that's not what I wanted to do. Oh yes, it is. So now I want that on the far mic. Fuck me. There we go. So now the far mic will be out at the beginning. So we've just got the room mic, hopefully. That's just the room mic. So you see, like if you wanted to do some weird mic automation, um, it's it's a good way to do it there. So anyway, so we've looked at the tight and the uh, loose. Now let's take a quick look. Oh, at the, we've already done the process. So so we've we've taken a look at the ensemble drum. So now let's take a quick listen to some loops. Uh, we'll do some four four because three, four is difficult to show against what I already have loaded. It's just hassle. Let's maybe bring all this automation off as well, because we don't want the mics fucking around while we're playing here. So. 
right, so they're all in. So on track three, now we have some loops. So let's take a look at those. Oh, and I'm down in the effects still. Let's just play that. Let's see what happens. And that is how I tend to use loops, by the way. Oh, nice one. Who did this? <laughs> Audio Inferior. Who was responsible for that loop? I love it. But like, you can play it over what I've already recorded. Um, yeah, not with the delay. By the way, that's how much delay there was when I pushed the key. Actually, it was a bit more than that, but whatevs. That's a lovely loop. So we'll, we'll just throw that in over the top. What's this high stem doing? So it's just doing da 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 da, but we can play that over. So yeah, this is a fun little thing we can do is, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna pull some of the, uh, the low end. So you see we've got the low pass and high pass filters. I'm actually gonna use the cutoff here to cut. So that's going up there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull out the, so it's more of just like a high end. Right? And then, oh, why is that so out of time? What did I do wrong? So that's in time. Why are they not in time together? What is happening there? Interesting. I'm having trouble getting those to be in time, but yeah. Interesting. They both sound in time, but That's a bit bad. It might have just been the loop. So what I've got now is this. This is a loop, but obviously I've already done all my accents. So I'm going to cut out the bass from it using the high pass filter, which I just realized you can't really see. Sorry. So I'm just going to pull up the high pass filter here. So we kind of get in there and then these are the kind of, so loops are the kind of things um, that I lay, like a lot of people will just go, when they'll do it with the thing in, they'll just go, I'm a composer, right? Like that's what a lot of people will do, which is fine. You can do that. But what the way I tend to use loops is like I program my, my accents and my, my beat so that the compositional intent is very much mine. And then what I do is I pull in loops to augment it. So like I said, we have this loop in there now, but we don't want those low hits. So I'm just going to pull them out with this so we have high end energy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the mod wheel uh, to, the, to the thingamajig, what would you call it? The big knob. And we're gonna we're gonna play with the automation on that. So we just right enable our um, our main instrument track. I work multi timbrely. If you work uh, with one patch per contact, then you don't need to like the like this percussion instrument is where the contact instrument is loaded. These MIDI channels are just pointing at this instrument track here. So I'm gonna right enable the instrument track, and then just I'm gonna fade this in so that we kind of get that high end energy. But it's an effect now. So. Right. So now when we layer it together, I'm going to turn the right enable off. So it's just a layer that's in there, you know, like obviously I would take a bit more time with it than I did right then. But and what we can also do is pitch this up. Oh, that's mental. I 
I feel like the samples are um, using, yeah, they're using Time Machine, which is an interesting choice. I'm just going to try, I'm just going to try for the sake of it, trying this as a sampler. Oh no. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to. I'm just going to try something different. Can we? Yeah, I prefer that kind of tone. So what, for those of you wondering, that's like a more advanced thing. So basically uh, their pitch wheel, so each, all of the samples in their drums are using Time Machine Pro, which what it does is it maintains time over pitch, right? So if you pitch something up, you get artifacts because it's moving further away uh, from the timing rather. Whereas if you change to a beat map, it's valuing the beat over the pitch. So you end up with the, the basically it speeds the sample up. That's why you get the kind of gating. Like if I do it the other way, it's basically extending it, uh, extending the waveform out. But I prefer the sound of this to say, um, like, so this one is a time machine. And this one, you know, it's more of a, more of a thing. Oh wait, we soloed it, that's why. You see, now it's more of a That loop stopped playing. Why? <laughs> Oh, because I did that. There we go. Because I hung it over. So it's more of a... Which I enjoy. Anyway, so that's uh, loops. I'll just go through a couple more for you. Just load it up. I'm actually going to close that patch and reload it because I don't know if I'm messing with their programming setup and that's causing some lag. So I'm just going to, I don't know for, for, a fact, for a fact if that's what's happening, but it got a little sluggish after I did that. So we're just going to load it back in. So where were we up to? We were up to loops. Uh, so let's just pull in some of the, look, they're all Time Machine Pro loops. Um, let's try just some of these faster ones up here. Oh, the loose ones. I'm, I'm curious as to what loose loops are like. That's cool. That's actually a really cool loop. Like that's so what they've done is they they've, they give you a loop, and they have like some stem breaks breakdowns of it, or at least they do. Yeah. So there's battle cry. There's the low stem. And this is a different loop. Low stem, mid stem. <laughs> and then the high stem. So like if I play a loop and I know I like a section of it, I can break out into the. And by the way, for those of you who are new to percussion programming, looking at something like this is a very good way to figure out how a lot of those big drum style sounds are put together. So like you can hear this is very big. So the low parts are going, wait, no, no. So, 
bits and the low bits are playing. And then the middle one is just going. And then the top layer. And if you notice, that's how I program mine. Like I have the top end, the mid end, and the low end doing slightly different things. So the low end's doing this accent. Dun, da dun, 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 dun. Anyway. And then this middle one's kind of doing this, and the top one's kind of hanging the top. So uh, if I unmute everything else, there we go. And you see that like, And it's how you create those kind of interestingly rhythmic things as you break them up into different kind of uh, different groups, low, mid, high. So the lows I usually use for accents, you know, the big downbeats. So in this case, it's this, you know, done. It's, I can just delete. Right. The mid is playing this. Dun, digga, da, da, digga, digga, da, da. And the high is just chugging along. It's chugging along. And you see, you put them all together and you get. It's a very interesting way and it's a very good way to learn. Audio Imperial has just informed me that the MIDI files are also available for it. But I am going to have a look. Are they are they in the folder structure? Let me let me double check that. Cerberus, Audio Imperia, Data, Samples Note, Note, Sample Drums, Loops, MIDI files. Here we go. So one twenty. So let's say what 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 did we like? What did we like? Um, let's let's pull them in. So we liked battle. No, we liked the compulsion. So I'm going to drag compulsion in as a MIDI file. And let's take a look. Let's take a look at this bad boy. We're just going to. So that's compulsion. That's a really cool thing. And it, it would, um, what would be cool? As, a, as an update, Audio Imperial, if you're still around, is if you had a MIDI drag on the uh, UI, which is possible uh, because we did one in Bravo. So, like, if you need help with setting that up, I'm sure you guys will be fine. You know, let us know. You know, we'll 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 try and tell you how we how we programmed it into Bravo. But what would be cool is if the MIDI of those loops was on the loop page, and you could drag it out of the UI onto the thing, so I didn't have to go to the folders. Um, you know, but having the MIDI at all is really cool because like you said, I can come in. That's awesome. So what we'll do is we'll try putting that on the, the so that is on the, so that's just on the ensemble tight. Let's put it on the ensemble loose. See what happens. Kind of cool, but obviously on the pro the the processed version is a lot bigger. So we got the stack turned on layers. Oh, so the randomizer. I would have to read the manual for what this does, but let's take. This. Holy fuck, I didn't know that was a thing. So it sounds like what Stack is doing is when I play back uh, a hit, I'm on the wrong one. If I turn this randomizer up, it sounds like it spreads them out. You see, so they get more flammy. So if you've got big drum things like this, if I pull this, it's gonna flam them. which is the most insane percussion feature ever. 
and everything from this point, including my own libraries, will now steal relentlessly from this. <laughs> I'm joking. That is an amazing control. And when I say steal, I mean, like, I not, not steal, like, inspired by? <laughs> it's a really cool feature that in my, it's one of those features that raises the bar, you know? I always talk about this when it comes to sample libraries is that every every sample library that comes out, thank you, Audio Imperia. Thank you so much for allowing us to do that because that is a really cool idea that I had never come up with. And you see what Audio Imperia has done there by having a feature like this, they've raised uh, the usability for everybody. And if they're cool with us doing it too, then we'll do it. And we'll, I've already got an idea of what I would do slightly different. I'm going to do that. And then Audio Imperia is going to take that from us and then they're going to improve on us. And then we're going to take that, improve. And then eventually we just get better. What you don't want is when people just put out the same thing over and over again. You've got to try and keep pushing. And things like this randomized take something that sounds really kind of sterile and turns it into a live section. I, I think Hybrid 2 and Audio Imperia should just have a love in. We should make a library together one day. It would be it would be the hybrid goodness of death. Holy fuck me. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing, but now I do. Low CPU. What's that doing? It's just just on. Oh, okay, so it's the velocity curve. So if we pull the velocity curve in, it'll be a lot more kind of subtle. Now we'll do it as a school band, 100% random. <laughs> I can imagine the conductor, please, in time. <laughs> no. So what I'm actually going to do is um, I'm actually going to assign, I'm going to assign the randomness. If I can, can I do that? Will it let me? Oh, I can't. If that if that was a feature, that'd be cool. Um, again, Audio Imperia is with us today in the chat room. So we can actually, um, for those watching on YouTube, I don't know how well you can read the bottom. I'm, I'm suggesting things on the fly. That's why I'm talking to the chat room more than I would normally. But what would be cool is if I could automate this uh, randomize, which it doesn't appear I can do. Because then what I could do is while it's playing is... You know what I mean? Like I could make it build and get wider as we um, as we build into the track, but I fuck it sounds awesome. <laughs> sounds amazing. Okay, so that was that. Anyway, we we almost made it into the next folder. <laughs> Audio, Imperia, drums, Cerberus, loops. So drum kit. This I haven't listened to yet, so we're just going to load this in. I'm going to take these solos off. So the drum kit. Wrong one. Wrong one. All right. So this, I imagine, is going to be more of a natural vibe. Okay. Oh, okay, they're crescendos. So what is kick on? C0? Damn. <laughs> yep. I wonder if we can just put this on the drum kit. What does that sound like? So the bottom one needs to be on C0. It's probably not going to work, is it? But, um. No, it's not going to work that way. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to delete those. God, having to kick and snare that far apart, though. Oh, 
it was I heard this drum beat the other day. It was like it was it was less than it was like boom, boom, boom. And I was like, that sounds out of time. And then the more it played, the more I got into it. Okay, so this sounds this sounds like if you wanted like a natural drum kit. We've got the hi-hats up here somewhere. Well they are. G5. Jeez, we go. Do we have a GM version of this? No. I feel like the drum kit would probably be better suited like as a kind of GM standard one layout because having the hi-hats all the way up here. Um, if that makes sense, so not just and then I have to come all the way down to C0 to get the kick. put the process drum kit. Wait, what's the hits only? All right, so no crescendos or anything. And then processed. Go on, son. Go on, son. Oh, Pollock. Sorry, I have to wait for it to load in. Is it like, so Audio Imperia, could we potentially one day maybe get this as like a GM, you know, so you get like kick, snare, top, hi-hats. You know, like the normal setup, the usual. Jesus, the process is insane. <laughs> so deep. Oh. I mean, it's a full sound, isn't it? That's for sure. I need to turn these the fuck down, though. No, I'm. I don't. I don't prefer. I prefer. I don't pretend to be a good regular drum kit programmer. So I'm just gonna move on. But that sounds awesome. Because normally, like you, you guys saw. Normally, I write like these kind of big. Uh, uh, so we can do that. Do that and then da, da, da. do that as like a little ba, ba, ba. so that 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 okay next instrument. I have no idea what that's going to sound like. It's going in. I wonder if we could put that like. This is sounding awful. My bad. Oh God, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. I'd need time with that one. It's too, it's so far apart. It's hard to get the groove together. But like, so yeah, I, I love the sound of it, but I think I think I would prefer to have that um, layered closer together. And then finally, sound design. 
Let's have a listen. So we've got tonal hits, first of all. Oh, here's that hybrid tone. What, what key are we in? Ah, we're in D. So it looks like you change the pitch down here with the key switch. If you want it to sound wet, get really low. So we'll put our we'll put our diva in D. <laughs> well, because I've deleted a load of stuff, one of the cool things is because I have the thing still set up, I can just drag in like the MIDI track, track from. Okay. Let's try some, let's try some anti, uh, atonal, anti-tonal, Ato anti-tonal, is that all, that's not a word, holy ball. Jesus, they're intense. Lovely. Lovely. What else we got? Tonal atmospheres. Okay. I'm waiting for that big wave. sounded like a arrival. And as you can see, I didn't mention these up the top, but I thought they were self-explanatory. We have attack release uh, up at the top on those ones. And obviously dynamic, dynamic range, sample starts, etc. cetera. Are, are, they're up in the control, but I, I feel like at this point, I don't need to explain what an attack and a release does <laughs> much anymore, but... You know, so we can. For those of you unaware, is if I pull the release down, when I take my finger off the key, it'll stop. Which is good if you want to. Like one of those gravity things, but a bit of release, you know, something around a thousand. And it, that's a natural decay if you want like something stylized. You know, it depends. It depends how you plan to use it, but that's nice to have. So the stereo spread on these atmospheres sounds like this. So there's mono. I 
I actually do love putting things into mono every now and again. There's something super unnatural sounding about that. You know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't expect a sound like this to be coming from one location. Can you automate this? You can. So what we could do is play, are we on four? Play one of these. Where are we? Down here? Right, let's play that one. Now, so what I'm going to do is on 002, right, which is this one, I'm just going to solo this for now. We're going to, we're going to start in mono, right? And then open to stereo as it, as it comes to the end here. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Fuck me. There you go. And then maybe back to mono as it dies out. Ready? So mono, and then it's automation here. And then back to the middle. So it's really cool for doing those kind of weird, uh, weird kind of sounding movements, which which don't sound like a lot. I mean, like going from mono to stereo doesn't sound like an obvious choice for a, a you know a creative effect. But if you are uh, trying to do something different, you know, or create textures which have context, uh, you know, that have like some context where something growing out of like something small and then expanding into something huge and large. Being able to go from mono to stereo like that. Listen, spread. And it adds a, uh, it adds, you know, it adds interest to what would otherwise just be, um, you know, so keep those kinds of things in mind, you know, keep them in mind. Uh, so that was the tonal Atmos. And then finally in this show, we're going to go for the atonal. And as you can see, because I changed the patch, that number two is now not assigned. Just a worth mentioning there. Oh, nice. I already know a project I'm going to use these on. So I want, I want to start with something loud. Like that. Okay, where's my number two gone again? Right, it's there. So I'm going to assign number two again to the stereo spread. Start at the bottom. Start at the bottom. Now we're here. I've been living in LA too long. So now, hopefully, mono. It's so simple. It's such a simple little trick, but it works really well. And the fact that they haven't pre-assigned that means it's easy to set up. Right. And what we could also do is on number three, we'll apply it to the big knob so that when it's mono, we could maybe, um, that's right, there it is. Uh, while it's mono, we'll have the effect up and then it comes down as it spreads. You know, so like a complete opposite thing. Again, just a weird texture. And you see how it's just taking something which which they provided and I'm making it more unique. I'm making it more me, which is when when I'm going to use this in, in actual, you know, games and films and stuff. I'm actually working on a game right now. This would be perfect for like 
when I use these in context of those kinds of things and I just do something a little different with it, then, you know, it, it, it not only becomes more bespoke to me, it becomes more bespoke to the project and it takes it away from what they've provided. You have to remember when it comes to sound design or anything like this, you want to take it in your own direction, you know, just because you already have a drone doesn't mean all you have to do is play the drone. What can you do with the drone? Can you add effects to it? What can you do with the drums? Can you process them, pitch them? Can you distort them? Like just, you know, try playing with things and making them your own. Or even like in this case, instead of using the loops, the loops in this are amazing, but they've provided the MIDI. So load up the MIDI and make something of your own. You know, like you could, let's, let's put this in. This is going to be awful. Let's put it in eight note triplets. And that worked, you know, like oh, 16th triplets now. Oh, wait, wait, redo, 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 redo. Uh, 16th note triplets would probably sound crazy. But you see how we were like just by using their uh, their MIDI information, I was able to create something which they didn't provide, but sounded cool. Yeah, that wouldn't work. But like if you slam it into eighth note triplets, all of a sudden you go from... great but eighth note triplets you know so you can create it and that's what i'm talking about so if you're like there's no it's not cheating if you use a loop it's cheating if you use the loop to be lazy that's that's what i'm saying so if it's if your compositional intent with what you're writing doesn't change by using a loop, then use a loop. If you are building around a loop, I feel like, you know, you're kind of basing your work on someone else's. So, you know, just try, take what they give you and try to figure out new ways to make it a little bit more unique. But that is like my overview of um, the Audio Imperia uh, Cerberus, which I, I love the UI, by the way. I need to I need to give my compliments to the chef, so to speak, on the uh, on that. But yeah, we, so like I mentioned, you have the ensemble drums, which is, so the ensemble drums are like the loose and tight ones. They're like your clean, organic ones, like I mentioned with Saga. However, I think if uh, if you're going for that, I think Saga does that type of sound better, that kind of uh, rumic, natural, organic sound and percussion. But this also provides that. I just think the room is a bit better in Saga. But when you get into the process stuff in Cerberus, it's insane, uh, like I mentioned, so... You know, I'll, uh, for those of you joining late, this is uh, this is what the the uh, it sounds like with just the normal, which is a cool sound, absolutely cool sound. And you know, you've got more mic positions to you know help bring that out. But then the process version. So you see, there's the, uh, you know, the big sound. That That is what Audio Period does well, that big kind of in-your-face power, powerful thing. I love, absolutely love this randomized feature because without it, it's very stale. But with randomize, you get, it feels like a section is playing it. It's a beautiful feature, and of course, you can make it more stereo. And this, the, this, and Saga both went instantly into my percussion template. And you know, I'm a perk horse, so Saga's adding that natural room vibe. This is adding the punch. This has become like a focal element for me. Uh, so I've been told that I need to try the tonal hits, but in reverse. So I will do that. Tonal hits. Let's do it. Tonal hits reverse. So I, I did forget to mention the reverse. I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's this button here. So now it's going to play the sample backwards. So six. We on six? No, so I should be on five. Where's my key? Wait, do I need to? Yeah. And this is the start position here. So it's going to play from the start position. So you can't just do what I did and put it in reverse. 
And the only reason I noticed that is because I know that I did that my own library and I was like, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it work? So what you got to do is, is this is kind of hidden and I don't know how well you guys can see it. Maybe you, maybe audio Imperial, you guys, you can make this like a bright color with, you know, I don't know, some fade over the edge or something, but, uh, yeah, you, you grab this and then amazing sound so when let me have a look i just want to check something over here uh yep and as i suspected like uh the audio imperia which and like like i'm I'm not you know shitting on you like not shitting on you guys that's not what i mean to say but like one thing that a lot of uh developers started doing when when the option became available is they started protecting their sample libraries basically so people wouldn't resell them blah 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 but when it comes to things like sound design and percussion, I, th I find it's very important um, like uh, that you have access to the open wave files. And while it looks like uh, what they've done is protected, so Audio Imperial have uh, encrypted uh, the individual hits, things like the loops, you can, yeah, you can drag in as audio files. So let's just do that. So they come in, you see, like, and they're 120 beats per minute. So if you're wondering how to use those in Cubase very quickly, uh, up here at the top, it's not always ticked. Uh, there's a musical mode button. So you just click that and it's now in musical mode and it'll reset to the tempo. Like, so if we're at one, I don't know, we're at 140, right? And this isn't on musical mode. You see that it, it's mental. You just come up here to this top bar, click musical mode and boom. Okay, it sounds shit because it's going so fast, but. but the cool thing with audio files is, you know, you can mess with them, but they've also got the, uh, like the most important one is if you ever have something like a Bram or a sound design element, and I don't know if they've done it with the, yeah, with, yeah, with the atmospheres as well. Like these kinds of things are important to have as wave files because then you can just place them like it saves time like for example if i was uh you know I, I just needed a hit to finish this off um if you protect the library you ha it means the the user has to load up a patch create a midi track record a midi note and then make sure it's timed up in the right place in order to get a hit whereas if i just always have a folder bank on the side or if you have your um media browser in cubase you can just search for it so now You know, and it's it's just there. I'm just gonna turn the musical mode off because for some reason the musical mode made it that short, which doesn't make any sense. But yeah. Um but let me find a tonal hit. I forgot I dragged an atmosphere in as a demonstration. I was like, that looks like a hit. Uh so if I drag in a hit, you know, boom. And then if I want, I can put it in musical mode. But now we have God, that's so loud. But we have uh access to our fader, so we can just mute. Okay, that was, a, that was a shit example, but you know what I mean, for fuck's sake. <laughs> now I can just do this. I can audition them like... <laughs> or the atonal. You know, and these kind of, like, particularly things like this, which have a lot of chaos in them, like if I just wanted that part, you know? Yeah, I forgot that's still doing eighth, uh, eighth note triplets. But you can do things like that, and of course, right click if I wanted to process, reverse. If I was so inclined. you know, so you can do things. So that's very, you know, that's an important thing to me personally. Is I like having access to those things. But yeah, that is Audio Imperia's Cerberus. Um, fantastic if you do hybrid, uh, you know, hybrid composition, you know, so trailers, uh, modern video games and films, you know, when they're more action oriented and you need something that kind of just punches you in the fucking face over and over again. That's what Cerberus is going to give you. 
uh, Saga is going to give you that room so that percussion has a, a world in which to inhabit. And it's that natural kind of vibe. So if you like something like John Powell, you know, like the Jason Bourne kind of films, that more natural room vibe, that's where you go Saga. If you want something that's like those trailers that kind of, you know, you sit in the, you sit in the, the theater and you feel it physically molesting you when the drums are coming out, that is what Cerberus will give you. And like, I love them both and I love them both for completely different reasons. That's why I decided I would stream them together today because while yes, they are both drum libraries that offer some similar instruments, they are so different in intent and so different in uh, execution that they coexist. And you know, for me, I am, I'm going to use them together. So I'm going to use Cerberus as my upfront, you know, for these really big punchy kind of you know, this big kind of in your face. And then I'm going to use Saga for the room, maybe layered in with some of the loose hits from down here. All in all, two libraries I absolutely love. Uh, and I'm probably going to throw this on YouTube, but like if you're watching on YouTube, this is where it's, you know, it's going to end. So, I, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at these two drum libraries today. Uh, I my, my hair is all fucked up because I had to wear the helmet earlier, but... Um, and if I split these videos up, that's going to make no sense at the end of the Cerberus video. But uh, but thank you for that. If you're watching on the live stream, hang about for a bit. We're going to hang around and chat on the uh, on the webcam before we go. But uh, if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And then you know.